Yeah, thank you for the invitation and the introduction. So I'm happy to give a talk about the cause of reinforced learning and its relations to the other machine learning method and the potentially numerous applications in the real world. And uh, the most importantly, I think causal reinforced learning is uh, one way to implement artificial general intelligence. And why I think in that way, today is the answer. So how many people know reinforced learning? Okay, about the causal inference or causality, causal reasoning, something like that? Okay, so I think a few people know causal reinforced learning, right? So that's why I'm talking about that. So the, the reason is, so if you search causal reinforced learning in Google Books, you can find nothing about the terms. But you can search, you know, reinforced learning and the causal inference. You can see it catch the more and more attention in the recent years. And also, if you search causality, it has a very long history in the literature. So in Judy Pearl's book, they date the causality back to the, the Bible time. So in the book, he quotes some stories in the Bible. So the when God asks, did you eat from that tree? No, this is what Adam replies. So the woman whom you gave to be with me, she handed the fruit from the tree, and I ate. And Eve is just uh, skillful. The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So, no, the God just asked a question about the facts. It's a yes-no question. <coughs> but Adam and Eve tried to explain something to avoid some punishment. So this is uh, some concept, human-made concept. So have the long histories. That's why I want to you know, combine reinforced learning and the causal inference. And that's the way to artificial intelligence. But before that, I want to do what is artificial general intelligence and what's its difference to the artificial intelligence. So I think in the past five years, the human achieved a lot of achievement in the AI, and they did a lot of jobs and where the AI surpassed the human performance. So from the 2014, the AI surpassed the human in face regulation and the 15 in image regulation. And in 16, it's in Go, and in the 18th, in the, some disease, and uh, recently, they also support the human in the pokers, and even the StarCraft. But this, you know, the AI surpassed the, the human in the different kind of the task. But this is a kind of maybe called AI, but it's not AGI. So why? Because take example for the StarCraft. So the Marcus is a famous fighter for, for deep learning. So he proposed some points so why he think the deep mind StarCraft is not AGI. So you don't need to read all the stuff. The main idea here is, is it's hard to transfer the knowledge learned by the model to the other task. The other thing is it needs much more data to train the model to achieve the human level. And that's unfair to human because it's get a lot of data than the human can get in his whole life. And you know, that even in the recent days they claim that AI can discover some physics laws and they say, you know, they have some overestimate the title in the papers. So and also he this is a quite recent papers about he claimed a new network can solve the three D body problems hundred and billion times faster. But again, you know, Marx is against uh, those titles. He thinks this title is the overestimate. And because it's this problem is only can be solved in a very simple case with very strong assumptions. So it's hard to generalize to the normal case. So Actually, Marx and Lequin have the quite a famous debate on the AGI. Say, of course, they have a lot of disagreements in a lot of aspects, but he have some agreements in the following seven points. And uh, one is thing, say, model-free reinforced learning is not the answer yet. I will talk about why it's not the answer yet. And the AI systems need the better in, in turn forward the models. Actually, in the machine learning community, 
causal models maybe is the closest to model to the physical models because the physical model of course is the best or perfect internal forward models but the machine learning model is most based on the statistics so it's hard to model the accurate relations between the data but the causal models can go further on that way another point is a common sense reasoning actually the causal model is one of the best way to can represent the common sense so it's also a natural way to do some inference so the first uh, the marks you know, he have the book about uh, the, some mind. He proposed some properties about AGI. So you can review those properties. It's actually something about the causality because causality involved a lot of concepts in, re in reinforced learning and uh, in the machine learning communities. Actually, so, so Marx, no, he proposed a lot of ideas about the causality, but it's not using the term of the causality. It can use some robotics or some invariance. And uh, the Quinzo also, you know, he thinks something missing in the current uh, machine learning systems. Uh, you can see this one is the it state. It's uh, missing some uh, the predictive model of the world through the observations and actions. This is exactly what reinforced learning does. So actually, so reinforced learning so far is the, maybe the, bo the best model, best framework to do something learning because it's mimic the nature's learning. Because it's, it's quite a nature, you observe something, do some actions and observe some effect about that and get some reward. Then to update your models, that's quite the nature's. It's about some you know, trade-off between the explore and explore point. But what's wrong with uh, the kind of reinforced learning? So this is, uh, I think many people have heard about this reinforcement that never worked. You no, know, deep just helped a little. And uh, that's why, you know, this is uh, the current situations about reinforced learning, right? So, you no, know, he only focused on the problem he wants to solve. He never cared about anything to surround it them, maybe it's quite dangerous. He only want to focus on the task or the simulation that he want to solve. So if it doesn't work, you can go deeper, right? But to go deeper doesn't help a lot because, you know, even you have a perfect approximation for some of the models, you cannot solve the explorations and the long-term credit assignment because, you know, um, the space is a continuous. You can never visit all the space, all, all the state, or all, all the actions. That's why you need to explore some structures in the huge, maybe infinite space, then exploit the structures to do more efficient learning. Another thing is the reinforcement learning has a fundamental flaw. That's why, you know, so maybe AlphaGo is a, no, it's a great project. But you can see it's uh, maybe the hardest uh, easy problems because it has uh, easy to get a lot of data you can generate from the simulations. It also have the deterministic and full observable state and uh, easy to score. So actually they don't need some memories for that. So, but the problem is, uh, you know, they train most uh, reinforcement systems starting from the scratch. That's, uh, you know, it's quite, it's not that data efficient because you, you can use in human knowledge about that. Also, during the learning, you can, you know, and based on the, the knowledge you learned from the previous data and uh, saved a lot of space and memories to explore more efficiently. So here, so I think it's a quite a famous uh, metaphor from the Le Kun about uh, reinforced learning. He claimed the uh, reinforced learning is the cherry in the cake because he contained the very little information compared to the supervised learning and uh, self-supervised learning. Because in the reinforced learning, the only information he wants to get is uh, the reward. The reward is uh, most time it's just a human design reward. So it's uh, hard to contain all the information about the task. That's why he thinks reinforced learning is hard to work in the real world. And but why, you know, we, we talk about a lot of flaws about reinforced learning and uh, why we should care about the causal reinforced learning, right? 
So the first thing is that Rudy Pearl, he's the one of the establisher of the, the causality, right? He said, um, he think reinforced learning is a kind of one way to explore causal inference, but it's only limited to the interventions. That means they only consider the intervention distributions in the model, but the causal models can go beyond because they not only consider the interventional distributions, but also can consider the counterfactual distributions. That means they can predict what will happen if we didn't see the actions of the state. So it contains a more a broader range of the distributions. And also, the Bernhard said something, you know, he asked two questions about reinforced learning. Because reinforced learning, so it's hard to work on the high dimensional data, but it's very easy to work on the low dimension data. That's quite easy to understand, right? Because the low dimensional data has a much smaller space. It's easy to do some exploration. But a human did it the opposite way, because the more higher dimension data can give more information about the environment, and a human can extract the concepts of the high level variant variables from the high dimensional data and can do more efficient learning. So this is a quite a conflict in the reinforced learning. And the other question is, you know, uh, I think it's a, there is a quite famous technique in reinforced learning. It's called the uh, um, experience replay. That means every time you have to replay the data when you <coughs> learn the models. Why you want to replay the data? Because you want to, you know, construct some IID data, but the, the reinforced learning problem is not IID data because it's generated from the sequence, right? Always depends on the histories. So in that way, you lost a lot of information about that. So why? That's the reason current reinforced learning doesn't work yet. So another way is the reinforced learning is to have some actions, you can do some interventions, that's it quite close to the do calculus in causal models. So that's a, it's a quite a natural way to compare these two different models. <coughs> Another way is from why we care about the causal reinforced learning from the natural science. So nowadays it's quite a reproduce some result from the paper, not because they are cheating, because they only can get the pattern from that data set it's hard to get the same pattern from the other data sets. That means the data they learned, the pattern they learned is not quite general. So maybe it's not, cannot reflect the nature of the data. That's why he always learned the flawed patterns. So it's, it's quite like you know, the figures before the Einstein, because the data is quite simple. It's easy to observe the, some rules of the mechanisms from the data. So they can do some experiments, collect some data, and develop some theorems, and from the theorems can infer some property from that. But after Einstein, the data become more complicated. It's hard to infer some theorem from that. So he do, they reverse the process. So they first define some properties, then based on properties, and develop some theorems and using the experiment to verify the theorems. So this is two different way to see the physics. Actually, causal reinforced learning exactly covers the two different ways. So you can see the reinforced learning follow the, the blue arrows. It's the, do the interventions, get some you know, information, and infer some properties. And the causal inference is based on assumptions about the data then do some experiment to verify it. So it's a quite a natural way to combine um, color inference and the reinforced learning. Another way you can see from the cognitions, right? So in the human summarize the rules and experience from the intervention with nature, and then exploit this to improve their adaptions in the next exploration. And what causal reinforced learning is exactly do the same thing. They learn the causal structures from the agent communicating with the environment and optimize the policy based on that. Actually, when I wrote this metaphors, I found then I found a lot of um, words said by celebrities in the literatures. The first thing from the Jokowi, 
He said the artwork wraps of the world, the way we mirror its uh, color structure, it's at the mercy of the influential tools we have in the brain. So this sentence exactly say we should know. We should learn the color structure and summarize the rules from that. Then you can find the John Piaget, that's one of the established of the psychology. And he said play is the answer to how anything new comes about. That's said about intervention and communicate with nature stuff. And the final is from the David Hume. That's all also one of the established of the causality. He said all reasonings concerning matters of facts seem to be founded on the relation of the cause and effect by means of that relation alone. We can go beyond the evidence of our memory and the senses. That means we should be using or exploit the causal structures to, to do some explorations. So given this, we can say, you know, causal reinforced learning is, uh, is a combination of the two different fields. They have the two parts. One is from, we can using causal inference to help reinforce learning, help more efficient to learn the policies. The, on the other side, we can also use in reinforced learning to do some color discoveries, discover features or structure from the data. Actually, the causal inference have two, also have two parts. One is causal reasoning. It means giving you the causal structures and infer the different uh, properties based on the structures. The other thing is more difficult, it's about the cause of learning. So you know nothing about the structures. You want to learn the structures from the data. So they have also have the very different problems like a confounding. That's the quite a popular problems in color infant counterfactuals. And the reinforcing also based on state reward action, something like that. Also on policy and off policy. Off policy it's quite related to the color inference because in that way you cannot do the interventions. In that case, counter, hidden counter confounding will play an important role in off policy reinforced learning. And so here is just the reinforced learning, just to recall some concepts. It's uh, at some states, the agent do some actions and to get some word from the environment. The actions also will cause the environment to change into the, the next state. And the most important hypothesis is about the reward hypothesis. So that means all the tasks should be defined by the reward. So this is the most common concept in reinforced learning, but I think this is also the weakest concept in reinforcement learning because a lot of problems is uh, caused by the weak year-defined uh, reward. So then talk about some key concepts about uh, causalities and where we use in our causal reinforcement learning. So everyone knows the causation have the different the meanings from the um, associations, right? So here's uh, quite a famous principle of the common sense proposed by Richenbach in 1991 first. And so if we have the two variables, they have some connections, a statistical dependence between them. So then while the following causal concept must hold or X or cos Y or Y cos X, or there will be some hidden variables cause the both. And the causation have two obvious advantages. One is intervention, right? You can predict what happens if we do some interventions on some variables. The second one is you can predict outcome the case where you never observe. That's kind of virtuous, right? So here another thing is proposed um, by by Bernhard Sharkov. It's called you know it's quite um, close to the physical mechanism is called independent causal mechanism, right? So if we have two variables, T and A, T is the temperature, A is the attitude, you, you can model these two variables, right? You can two ways to factorize the, the two variables. One is uh, PA given T times PT. That means we think the temperature causes attitude. The other way is uh, PT given A times PA, that means attitude causes temperature, right? You have the two different ways to factorize the joint, same joint distributions, but only the second way it makes sense because 
if we factorize it this way, that means the PT given A is independent of the PA. That means you can change to another city again using a different distribution of the A attitude. It doesn't matter about the physical mechanism PT given A, right? So it still follows the physical mechanisms. So in this way, so if we want to do some transfer learning, it's much easier than the, the first way because you can direct transfer the mechanism PT given A. It's never changed, it's never affected by your data. So that's why we should consider the causal mechanism in the factorizations. So another quite popular way is uh, consider confounders. So this is, uh, I think it's a quite popular way. It's a uh, kidney stone examples. Um, if we only observed, you know, each categories of the patient with the different size of stones, right? You can see treatment A is always better than treatment B. But if observed, you know, overall recoveries, you will choose treatment B. That's a conflict, right? Because here, the size of the stone is the confounders. If the confounders, if observed, you can just do some do calculus to integral all the confounders. You can get the consistent results. But if the confounder is unobserved, that's always the problem, right? He always shows some example proposed by Alex in his blog. And here, we have a very simple case. X, Y is observed, Z is unobserved, confounders. And Z and Y is one dimension data. X is uh, uh, M dimension data. So you can see this is the color structure model, how they connect by each other. So we assume that the noise is a Gaussian. So it's easy to write down the joint distribution like this. Because we only know X, Y is observed, so we just uh, extract the covariance function matrix between x and the y can like this. So here, on the right side, we have the parameter, how many parameters we have? It's the m times m plus m plus one parameters. On the right side, we have the, we have the three uh, m plus three parameters. So when m is larger than three, so this Alex proposed the method to can construct uh, some solutions. So they have construct the two different solutions, but then lead to the same covariance matrix. So in this case, that means the parameters is not identifiable. So you can't you can't claim this is the causal model, right? Because you have the multiple parameters can lead to the same joint distributions. That's why the latent confounder is so difficult in causal reinforcement and even in the causal inference. So the most important concepts in causal inference is the counterfactuals, right? Here is an example. So we have three variables, and the x in the encouragement, and how homework, how much time you do the homework caused by the, your encouragement. And your exam score, it depends on your homework and the encouragement. So here is the linear model, just uh, for the examples. So here we want to ask the question. So we consider a student, it's called Joey. For him, we measure the X, y, H, and the Y. So we observe the X, H, or Y, but we want to ask the following questions. So what will Joey's score have been if they doubled his study time, right? So this counterfactual means I want, so I observed some result, but I want to go back through the history. So go back to the history at the, the previous time and the previous situations. If I want to do another actions, I want to observe the, what will happen if I do the different actions. So here the thing, the result is already happened, but I want to go back to the history. So I want, so if I double the study time, what will happen in this case? So in this case, it's quite simple because you know you can from the x h y can estimate the noise terms. The noise terms is a uh, you can so it's a background information about uh, that person or the situations about that person. So based on the observations, we can estimate the situations at that time. Then we can do some interventions on the previous model and calculate these things. So that's uh, what counterfactuals means. 
you don't need to do ex do the actions uh, in the real world. You just uh, want to do some reasoning from the model based on the observed data. So there are three identification problems in causal models. That's uh, the huge difference from the machine learning models. So the first identification means because you want to calculate some interventional distributions, but you cannot do some interventions in the real world. So you have to reduce the intervention probabilities to the observational probabilities, then using the normal conditional distributions to calculate interventional distributions. If you can do that, that means this causal reasoning is identifiable. <coughs> the second one is, you know, when you do some causal discoveries, you want to discover the structure from the data. So you want to prove the parameters, uh, the orientations of the structure can be uniquely determined from the data. The third one is if we use, like in the latent variable model, you have to determine the parameter uniquely. So that's the three kind of identification problems in causal learning. So, good. So this is uh, how causal reinforced learning works and some key points. And also it's connected to a lot of machine learning concepts. The so one is about, uh, you know, you can, can relate causal reinforced learning to transfer learning. Uh, why it didn't play the video? Oh, this video is about uh, you know uh, the agent that can run in the different environment. It's from the deep mind. They say train the agent, and they can run in the different terrains. The bad thing is they feed the terrains as a known feature to the models and learn that. But if we are using causal reinforced learning to do that job, it's it's quite easy because you know the terrain always changes over the environment. So you can, you can discover some robust features of the structures about the environment and just uh, transfer the color structures. And in that case, you don't need to know the terrain in advance, then you can do the transfer learning. Uh, the other one is in the meta learning. So the meta learning means you not only train the model can deal with uh, one special task. You can train a model can deal with a family of the tasks. The, fam uh, the task always sampled from the same distributions. So what kind of, this, this, what kind of the features can be shared by the different uh, tasks? That's the color structure. That's the most robust features that can share by a task. If you can extract some, you know, the independent the causal modules in the different tasks, you can different directly employ those modules in different tasks, then can learn the weight very fast. Another way is the same in the in the meta reinforcement learning. So here for each environment they also sample from the different uh, distribu uh, same distributions. But how can we, you know, this is only the distributions, but if we the different environment share the same color structures, that's the broadest family of the distribution because it's not only contains the observational distribution, also contains the interventional distribution and the counterfactual distributions. In that way, so the, the agent can cover the broadest families of the distributions. So in the multi-agent reinforced learning, you also can use in causal reinforced learning. Here, um, there are a lot of challenges in multi-agent reinforcement learning. Here, I just uh, highlight some one. The first one is a, is a joint action space, right? So when you have the multiple agents in the environment, the action space, or action space will increase exponentially. Actually, in that case, someone, though we have proved the, the conclusion like that, the property of the taking a gradient step in the correct direction decrease exponentially with the number of agents. That means when you have the more agents, it's almost impossible to go to the direct way, the, the correct way. So 
So in this case, you should you know, discover some structures between the state and the actions and reduce the action space. In that way, you can do some more efficient reinforcement learning. And the other thing is about the game theories. Actually, the national equilibrium doesn't work in this case because the national equilibrium only works in the non-cooperation situations. But for the multi for agent reinforced learning, it focuses on the cooperation situations. So the one of the fundamental concepts in game theory is called common knowledge of the rationality. That means you have to consider the different levels of the knowledges. So that means it's not only do we both have to be rationals. So on the first on the second level of knowledge it means I have to know, you know I'm rationals, right? But you still have to have the certain levels. That means I have to know, you know, I know, you are know I'm rational, right? So this is kind of the, related to the kind of factors. So in that way, you have to imagine what will happen if we take a different action because you don't know any information about the other agents. That's why you have to learn something, learn the structures, from the data collected from the other agents, then do some kind of factual reasonings to r infer some intentions of the other agents. That will help a lot in your learning policy. So then I want to introduce some potential applications in the various areas. One is you can use in color reasoning for the video predictions. Why no video works? Okay. It works on the TV. Yeah, it was moving on the TV. But it may not work. Can you click on the video? Slightly, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's so here, the first column is the ground choose. The other columns in different models predict uh, the videos. So we, in this model, we only give four frames. We want to predict uh, the long term trajectory by the video, right? So because you know, if we using statistical models, it's only based on the pixel information, right? Pixel information always is about uh, you know consider the neighboring information. It's hard to do some long term predictions. So you have to consider some color structures, you know. In, it's like a human did, right? It works? Yes. This is the trailer from the Van Gogh movies, right? It's only based on some paintings and interpolate and uh, explanate some plots between the paintings. This is done by the, the human artist, not the machines. So while my dream, you can generate some smooth movie like this, can, you know, feel some plot between the different plots in the movies. That's only can do by the, the color structures because it's a long-term global structures. It's not only based on the pixels. So another application is um, in the robotics. So, so here's some, you know, in the robotics, you want to learn the policies, right? Because of sometimes it uh, costs a lot of money or times. So you want to do some planning before do some actions. If we do the planning, so you have to, inf it, it, it's quite similar to the video predictions. You know, have to predict some reasonable trajectories from the current state. Then before you take the actions, you can estimate the risk of the different actions in the future, so then you can save the time for that. So the basic idea is you can learn from the sequence of the structures, then based on structures and do some explorations in the simulations. And for the self-driving, you also can use in causal reinforced learning. Here is uh, two different models in the, Model A have the two inputs. One is the dashboard. It has some brake indicators. The other one is the wind shades. It's uh, some uh, scenes. So the Model B have the only wind shades as the input. 
both models, only model B works because you know, if you can, if you take it, if we can look at the model A, if we take a break, you know, the break indicates it's on, then it will cause you take the break again, then it will cause the indicator on again. So in, in model A, the only action you can take is the brake. So that means the car is, can never move forward. So that's because here some structures. If we see X1, X2 is the wind shear, SN is just uh, the brake indicator, right? So in the ground truth models, there are no connection between these. But due to the hidden variables here, Xn is not independent and A. That's why I say using deep learning or any statistical models where connecting some mapping between them, they will cause a lot of problems in that way. So one big fear about uh, is the how to learn the structures and learn the polo and the policies from the observa observational data. The, a lot of applications in healthcare, medicine, and finance. These are some models about, this is quite a general model. So here we only observed some X reward and actions, but he, in this model we assume we have two kinds of hidden confounders. One is uh, time varying confounders. The other one is a time invariant confounder. That's why this is quite a general. Actually, a lot of applications based on this model for, CF dri for the driving. So if the ground truth, ground, then the true state in the driving is the, the environment state. <coughs> and the, here, the time invariant confounder, maybe it's the driver's uh, tire list, right? If we want to learn the policy, only depends on the environment state. It not depends on the, the, pay, the driver's uh, tire list. That's why we want to remove the effect from the U and only keep the effect from Z. So in that case, we want to learn the interventional uh, reward function, not just uh, you know, observed statistical reward functions. So actually, in this way, we can prove that under some assumptions, so only in the interventional reward, we can learn the optimal policies. So you can directly apply this model to different sequential data. So you don't need to interact with the environment. It's only learned the, the model from the history data. So yeah, here's uh, some conclusions about that. About the, here's uh, the big framework of causal reinforced learning. It's always about the two parts. Now, so most uh, work focused on the first part he want to use in some concepts from the causal inference to help uh, do something reinforced learning. Only a few work on the second part because it's more difficult because one reason is the lack of the benchmark and the simulations. It's hard to find some you know, ground truth for the data. So it's not easy to evaluate the algorithms. So about called if we want information we want to bring home is uh, called the reinforced learning was born for the AGI. So final, I want to, yeah, the Bernhard just upload some papers, single author papers to archive. So it's give a very good summary about the causality for machine learnings. So he also talked about something connected to reinforced learning and the other field. And the final, I want to recommend some books about the causality. And the first three books, all, wrote, all written by Judy Pauls, right? But in different levels, some to the public, some to the statisticians, some to the graduate student. And the fourth one is from the CMU. It's a focus on the conditional independence. Uh, this book is quite practical because it's quite easy to evaluate the conditional independence in the data. Uh, the fifth is uh, from the Bernhardt's group. It's a, it's a good summary of his group's work. It considered most folks on the color discovery uh, in two variables or multiple variables. And um, it's also a good summary for his group in for the um, 
for the 10 years work. And uh, the second was about uh, the causality in different fields. The first one from the physics introduced how now in physics how to see the causality. This book is about in the medicine books introduce some basic methods to how to do some inference, color inference in medicine. The third one is from the psychology, how to see the color inference, because the different fields have the different definitions for the ba even for the basic concepts. It's it's not a unified framework to deal with this topic. And the final one is some about the physics, some ideas can help you discover, design some experiment and get some ideas to explore some stuff. Yeah, that's it. <laughs>